Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the mach -E Vlog. Today we are at the LA Auto Show and we're gonna do a tour of every single EV that we can find here today. Just as we came in to the auto show, this beauty caught our eye is from Electra Mechanica and it's called the E-Roadster and they also have a bunch of Solos here. So let's check out the Roadster. Um, and I think it's just super cool. I absolutely love it. I, I really, really love it. I kind of thought it was a concept car and I'm thrilled that you can get this. It's gorgeous. Look at the interior. Very cool. All right, let's go check out some Solos real quick. Yeah. And here we have the other offering by Electromechanica, which is the Solo. This is a single person vehicle. Really, really cool. It's a trike design, very similar to my recumbent trike actually, but it looks kind of gorgeous on the inside. Really, really nicely supported seats there on the lateral side. So look at these colors. Absolutely gorgeous. Like much more plush looking than you would expect for something that's a trike. <laughs> Look at that. There were several new EVs announced at the auto show, and here's the first one that we'll cover. It's the Mullen 5. It's a Southern California-based brand, and they actually were inspired by the Southern California landscape and their design. I think the interior is absolutely gorgeous, so we haven't gotten to go inside one yet. I can't wait to touch it. <laughs> Very cool. All right, what's next? Now we're at Vinfast. This is a Vietnamese company, and uh, they bring two EV offerings. I think it's uh, the VF E35 and 36, both of which are quite large SUVs, and just one is slightly larger than the other. <laughs> this is like a five-seater, and this is the 35, and then the six or seven-seater over here, VF E36. And this company does have experience making EVs. They have a BFE 34 that they've been selling in Vietnam. And this is their announcement, their entry into the U.S. market. So very exciting to see them uh, coming into the U.S. market. And uh, this is the global premiere, as you can see in the background, of these two specific vehicles. And we have a video, or we will have a video at some point, with both of these covered. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. We were able to get up close and personal uh, as much as we could with these two. The 35 has a full done interior uh, that you can really get a nice look at. But this one is actually uh, partially full. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, you can only really see the seat tops. The interior isn't done on this one, apparently. Yeah, but this one does not have an interior yet. <laughs> isn't that a pretty car? This is the Fisker Ocean. We'll have a dedicated video on this coming soon. But for now, let's check out what they have here. Obviously, this is just a fun paint job. This one is just for fun. But yeah. let's go check out the real Fisker Ocean that was announced, or the sort of the production intent version was announced uh, yesterday or two days ago? Two days ago. Yeah, we got to watch Henrik Fisker talk about this and, and share the intent of the company. Uh, and really you see cool the screen stuff. rotating, and that's because the screen in the ocean is going to rotate just like that with a push of a button but i love this color i think it's reflective of the fact that it is the ocean <laughs> and we'll also, move over this matte finish though is absolutely gorgeous yeah. <laughs> so that rear window is called the doggy window <laughs> that actually rolls down so your doggy can get some air back there but the Fisker Ocean, a lot of people are very excited about this. Some people uh, have their doubts about Fisker. But they come with some pretty interesting stuff, a very sustainable company. A lot of the interior is recycled and they will have some interesting leasing options that make this a more likely EV for, for people to just test out without a huge financial implication. We are at the Zevis booth. This is actually sponsored by Electrify America and it's a zero emissions vehicle award program. First ever was this year. Here's all the award winners and they actually have four of them on display. This is the Canoe. It's actually called the Lifestyle Vehicle, but it is the winner of the top hatchback uh, van or wagon. So really interesting design here. 
take a look inside. And this will be in production by the end of next year, starting at about 35,000. I'm sure you're familiar with this one. This is the Tesla Model Y. This is the winner of the crossover over 50,000. If you're interested, we did do a Model Y versus Mach-E comparison. Uh, so you can check that out. This is a Tesla Model S Plaid. It actually didn't win in the category for best sedan over 60,000, but it's very cool to see this one here. It's of course, it's the one that does zero to 60 in under two seconds. But the winner in this category was actually the Lucid Air, but very cool to see the, the Plaid here. And here's the winner for the under $50,000 sedan, the Tesla Model 3. Here we are at the Hyundai exhibit. We have a whole bunch of offerings here, namely the first one being the Ionic 5. Uh, we got to sit in one at the Denver Auto Show. Here's one to play with right here. Hopefully we'll get a test drive soon. Yay, hopefully. All yeah. right, let's see what else they have. Of course, everybody's excited by the Ionic 5. This should be on sale in December of this year, but let's go see. Hyundai has some other, they have the Kona and they also announced a concept car that we're going to go down here and see now the kona that we're coming up on it's been refreshed for this year the front end i think looks a bit more aero and a little bit more futuristic so that's i think it looks nice somebody called this one a marshmallow with the white color i think it does look a little bit like a marshmallow but that's the kona ev and then we're going to hurry through this area because of the music. I actually really like the Kona because it's petite. And there's another Ionic 5. And here is their concept. This is the 7 concept vehicle. And we have some more footage and we're going to release a video specifically on this one. And uh, it's very futuristic inside. Of course, no door handles. It opens up uh, like suicide doors in the back. And Front. since we were able to be here for the debut unveiling, we got to see a really fun light show with the front headlights, which uh, it's not sure how you saw it, is, but it was really fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where to next? So we're just passing the GM booth, the Chevy booth. Uh, it's very disappointing. They don't have a single EV in their whole display. They don't have hybrids, nothing. And we're not going to cover hybrids today, but it's just sort of shocking that uh, GM is making some bold claims about their EVs and they don't have anything on display here at the LA Auto Show where other EVs have been announced. Yeah. Next, Fortunately, we're right by Jag, so let's check out an iPace, shall yeah, we? Yeah, we'll, we'll go see an iPace real quick. There it is. Of course, they don't have a ton of other EVs, but the I-Pace is pretty sweet. It's been out for a couple of years now. Starts at 69. Very nice inside. And we'll, we'll take a test drive of one of these in a future video. What do you guys think about the I-Pace? I think we should test drive it. That's what I think. I think we should test drive it. Okay. <laughs> All right. And another one that doesn't have a ton of stuff, but they just announced their first full EV, and that's Toyota over here. And we have another video coming on the Subaru Solterra, which is the sister car of this one. But this is the 2023 BZ4X, just announced recently, has about 220 miles of range. And looks very similar. Can you really tell the difference between this and the Solterra? No, because even the back, the Solterra and the BZ4X both have that double swoop on the back. Yeah. Which you'll see when it comes around. And they both have a lot of the black plastic cladding. Yeah. Looks I'm not sure if the Schnaz is a little different. The Schnaz is different, right? It's different. Yeah. But like I, I would get them confused out on the road. I would from the rear, that's for sure. And here we are at Nissan with their uh, coming soon model, the Nissan Aria. It'll be here late next year, I believe, is what they're saying now. 300 miles of range. Looks very nice. A bit bigger than I was expecting. Um, and I think it's not really that big, but these doors 
because they, they just sort of look massive. Uh, it's not open. <laughs> it wasn't yesterday. Pre-production vehicle. It It'd be nice if we could get in all of these, yeah. but pre-production, they don't really like that so much, unless you're a big, big YouTube channel. <laughs> and I think, of course, let's go over, check out more of the Nissan booth. See what other EV they have. You know what EV they're gonna have. The Nissan Leaf. And hopefully our audio is good. It's a lot louder on the public days. But here, of course, is the Nissan Leaf. Very good discounts on these, up to 226 miles of range. And everybody sort of knows the Leaf, or you should. Yeah. We'll take a peek inside this one since it's open, but... And Liv doesn't like that one because the center console is huge. I wish I did though. The seats are nice, the size is nice, the price is nice. Yeah. <laughs> the console is nice. All right. Some more EVs. I the Aria in a blue. I have to be honest, I really like the gold color. The gold color is unique. The blue looks very nice. It'd but... probably be beautiful outside, but in this lighting, not as great. Yeah. <laughs> We are here at the Electrify America EV test track. So if you are interested in EVs, this is a cool experience. They have Kias, they have Porsches, they have Minis. Uh, anything else they have? Uh, looks like a Hyundai, uh, Nero. Kona. Kona. Yeah, a really, really, really good spread of EVs. And we're standing right in the middle of it. So we're going to step yeah. out of the way for a second, but you can see over here, there's uh, a Mini going around the track right now. It's kind of adorable. And it's pretty neat that they are allowing people to get into EVs for the first time for a lot of these people. And we're going to try and see if we can get in one. Um, they have some live TV coming up, so we may have to just get out of the way. And if so, we'll continue on. <laughs> This one is very cool, but I don't know if it's for everybody in their day-to-day -day commute, but this is Cobera. They have a lot of experience making airplanes. This is their first EV car, but oh my gosh, take, take a look at it. It's all electric, 600 horsepower, zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. One of the really cool things about this, it has a five-speed transmission, so you can shift like you would in a traditional Cobra. They built the body themselves, it's out of carbon fiber. I think he said that weighs 80, 80 pounds, pounds for the body of this. Very, Isn't very cool, crazy? yeah. I would, okay, if you guys wanna know, like those Amazon gift list, this, this would be <laughs> on mine. I love it. I somehow feel like you can't get this from Amazon, to be honest. Another offering not to buy but to rent is an electric scooter, which is actually good to have because this place is quite expensive. So if you need any help getting around, you have this option too. And just outside the West Hall is Edison Future. They have a prototype of their truck and over here, their van that they are coming out with. Very cool looking. And I love the logos on the front, but let's take a look around the and we side. we can actually look inside, which we did not get to do at the debut. So let's take a quick peek, shall we? Yeah, definitely. And this has a sort of like a retractable, retractable awning over the back that's solar. Don't know how that, how useful that would be and for people. It has three full seats in the back. Did you see that? Like, yeah. It's quite expensive. Very, very cool looking. We're gonna take a quick peek inside. Audio might be an issue. And we're gonna keep talking over the music. <laughs> we'll talk over the music so we don't get a copyright yeah, issue. This is actually really cool to see. And you'll notice it doesn't have full rear view mirrors. It has these cameras here. And then on the inside, you can see that it has screens instead of those mirrors. That's actually not legal in the US, but that's something that auto manufacturers want to change. Welcome to Porsche. <laughs> We're in the Porsche Hall, which is separate from everything else. They have a bunch of Porsches here and they just announced a couple of various new versions of the Taycan. But let's go take a look at all the Porsches, but we're gonna focus on the Taycan, of course. We're standing in front of the Turbo S Cross Turismo Taycan in my favorite color. It's a green Mamba. Beautiful. And then 
Here's a white Taycan. Love the white, but the green and the red are definitely my favorite colors in this display. Beautiful. And then the one that they just announced a couple of days ago, the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. It's like the Cross Turismo, except more performance, lower, all sorts of good things. Very cool. And absolutely gorgeous looking. Here in Galpin Customs, they had a VW ID4 with some custom wheels and raised suspension. A Mazda MX-30, first time I've seen one of these. A Jaguar I-Pace. Here's a Porsche Taycan, and I believe the color is called chalk, which looks really nice on the Taycan. A nice Volvo XC40 recharge next to a black Polestar 2. And here is a space white Mustang Mach-E and it is a select model with some custom wheels on it. Here we are in the next hole and we are standing in front of Kia. Of course, you know the Kia EV6, but Kia also unveiled the Kia EV9. So let's go take a look, starting with the six over here. And we're gonna try to talk through, we have <laughs> music and not only is it hard to hear us, but uh, if it's copyrighted music, we could get in trouble for that and have to pull the video down. So we're yeah. going to just keep talking and babbling. Sorry or about our babbling. we'll make it quiet. <laughs> All of a sudden. So here's the EV6. This is the GT line. So it has a lot of nice extra features. We're working on a video on this one. So check our channel. We probably have the video out or coming out soon. I have to be honest, I absolutely love the interior of this vehicle. I'm not sure how much it changed with the standard line, but I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. We'll, we'll take a look inside since yeah, Luke mentioned there's that. There's some really intuitive features. If you like buttons, this is the car for you. <laughs> and then, of course, for a while they've had an EV. This one sort of looks like a marshmallow too, if you ask me. This is a Kia Nero. And it's a 2022 Nero that's been refreshed a little bit, starting at 39.9, so pretty darn good price. Now let's find the EV9. Whoops, there it is. It's over <laughs> here. I like the paint finish on this, but of course, this is just a concept. This is not slated for production, but. Not yet. <laughs> but it's sort of like a design concept to show what, where they're going with the Kia brand. And it's actually sort of boxy, but I love the front end of this one. And of like course... The, like the Honda 7 concept, it's sort of more of this like enormous family vehicle, like a traveling lounge sort of thing. Yeah, very much. Yeah. yeah, they really go all out on the inside. And you notice that they have like cameras for rear view mirrors instead of actual rear view mirrors as well. Again, not legal yet in uh -huh. the US, but uh, hopefully one of these days. The triangle design on the wheels is interesting. Not something we normally see. The and screeching. Even, even the wheel well is boxy. Yeah. The screeching that you hear, we'll get to that. That's uh, coming from a different booth that we'll talk about <laughs> soon. Um, but quickly, we'll just say here's like Stellantis, which is Dodge and Fiat. Uh, no EVs over there, unfortunately. So they have some hybrids, but no EVs. All right, where to next? Well, that's it. We're done. We're back home in Colorado. Just kidding. We're actually at the Subaru booth. They went all out. I really like it. It's super fun. But let's check out the Solterra. the sun. Well, we couldn't 
pick better timing. Yeah, that was great. And here's one that you can actually get in. We'll, we'll walk around so you can see. Oh, they have the hood up today. So, it's really loud in here. I did not look at the front previously, but there is no front. So that's good to see. Our real stand-up feature of this EV is that it has about 8.2 inches of clearance, ground clearance, which is amazing. SUV to have the capability and versatility of a Subaru. Yeah, the ground clearance looks the same as the Toyota, to be honest. Like it, huh? it's quite nice. Look at all these people testing it out for their lifestyle. It's so fun. And we are going to finish with Ford. We're a Mach-E channel, so we got to finish with Ford. And we're going to start here in the Ford booth with the F-150 Lightning, which Whee! is very exciting to see. It looks like other people are excited to see it too, which is awesome. Look at that mega power front. The mega power front is open. Let's go take a look at that real quick. It has charging ports on both sides, I believe. I mean, so that is check. super mega. Yeah, that's a huge, there's power in the front, power in the back, <laughs> power inside. This is a platinum level. Looks very nice inside. It has the, the screen that's sort of like the Mach-E with the dial on it as well, just like the Mach-E. And I got to sit inside this model. Very comfy, actually, and easy to get into as well. And in our vlog video, we got to meet Linda Zhang, who's the chief engineer on this one. But let's check out, of course, there are other EVs here in the Ford booth. I want to go to this other one over here first, I forgot. People aren't necessarily as excited by this, but this is actually super exciting if you ask me. We're heading straight toward it right now. <laughs> and that is the e-transit, which a lot of people use for like delivery vans, plumbers use this type of van, uh, all sorts of business customers. And they're selling these to the fleet. I believe they're sold out for the first year, which I think the production number is about 25,000. But check out the interior has a decent sized screen. And in the rear, the cool thing about this is like, this is the same as the <laughs> regular transit van from Ford. So like all of the, the mounts and things like that, that you can buy rack systems, you can get on this one without any changes. The range is about 126 miles, which doesn't seem like a lot, but for this type of utility van, it is perfect. Custom Maki -E here. This was at the SEMA Auto Show just a week or two ago. Custom color. I thought it was cyber orange in the photos, <laughs> but that's a more orangey orange. Which is much more tangerine in comparison. And, it's and then here is the, oh, sorry, I interrupted you. That's okay. And here's a cyber orange GT Performance Edition. They have a premium over here. And then look at our two favorite colors side by side. Wow. They look beautiful. That is a really beautiful color combo. Oh yeah, there is actually another EV here I forgot about. Yeah, not gonna... consumer available, but another EV that is super cool. Yeah, not consumer available, but if you want, you can build your own because the motor that's in this F100 is available as a crate motor. So you could actually build, buy a crate motor from Ford. It's basically the same motor that is in the Mach-E and then convert any classic vehicle that you want. It sounds really simple when you say it like that, but I feel like it'd be hard, right? Yeah, I think it's pretty difficult. And of course you have to get a battery as well. Pardon me, sir. <laughs> And inside, it looks a lot like a Mach-E. They have the Mach-E screen, the Mach-E center console, as well as the Mach-E screen. And let's finish up with a Mach-E GT launch. Here it comes. So what do you guys think? What is your favorite EV out of all of these that we found here today? Here it comes. Yeah, those squealing tires. <laughs> I told you. Oh. It, uh, <laughs> or, I, I hope that we come back next year and there's even more 
electric vehicles, but this is actually a pretty good selection of EVs and I'm very excited to see them. Very excited to see Ford go all out. I, you know, with the legacy American manufacturers, I think they actually have a pretty good representation of products. And this is an incredible ad right here. Look at that coming right at us. No! <laughs> I got a little tingly there. <laughs> I know, it looks like she's kind of intimidating. <laughs> it, it doesn't look like much with the GoPro, I think, but that was sort of weird. And we got to do this in the, the Grabber Blue GT, and it actually really does feel weird sprinting as fast as you can. Yeah. It was a wall. <laughs> it only gets up to about 30 miles an hour. This is a very short track, but very cool. What so, a great way to advertise EVs, having this dead silent thing, except for the squealing tires part. Yeah. <laughs> So that's it for all the EVs at the LA Auto Show. We're gonna have multiple videos on the Pisco Ocean, <laughs> yeah, Kia, Hyundai. So we have a lot more it's videos okay. coming out. And of course, we're gonna have a lot more Maki content of our own Maki, which is a Grabber Blue first edition. Um, make sure you subscribe to Maki Vlog. <laughs> the button's right down there. Give it a thumbs up and we'll see you soon.